previously on Unbreakables. Pro skier Angus set the early pace in the Amazon jungle and Norwegian ice. Rugby player Matt launched his challenge in the desert and with the Navy SEALs. Yes! Runner Barnaby has been hanging on to their coattails, while Xboxer Dave and Iron Man Fraser have battled to keep pace with their younger competitors and raged their own private war. <laughs> For their next challenge, the Unbreakables have travelled to South Africa and the remote region of KwaZulu-Natal. Benedict Allen has lived with some of Africa's toughest tribes and explored some of the continent's harshest terrains. This is the home of the most famous people in Africa. Famous for their bravery, famous for their utter ruthlessness. The Zulus. This valley was the birthplace of the Zulu nation. It was from here that they came to dominate great swathes of southern Africa. And you are about to experience their legendary ferocity. In the hands of the Zulus, the Unbreakables are being marched to the village of Ungadeni. They will have to master the brutal sport of Zulu stick fighting. Now, we knew this was going to happen. There's going to be injuries, there's going to be blood. They'll go head to head with the local women. Oh, it's just compressing on my neck. And be forced to take their medicine by the local witch doctor. Oh, <coughs> As outsiders to Zululand, the Unbreakables must face an initiation ceremony. Awaiting them in the village is Chief Umbankuza, a man feared and respected by all the Zulu tribes. They must submit themselves to the chief and obey his instructions at all times. They must bow before him and avoid eye contact. <laughs> The Unbreakables will be expected to live and behave like Zulus. Angus, you have been chosen by the chief to have the honour of slaughtering the goats. Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Well done. Okay. For a warrior nation like the Zulus, image is crucial. Acting bravely, looking fearless, and not hiding behind their hair. Dave is first up for the makeover. But part-time model Barnaby isn't prepared for such a radical image change. <laughs> What's it looking like, Benedict? <laughs> Dave, it's looking a bit patchy, to be honest. <laughs> if any of the Unbreakables refuse to have their heads shaved, they will be broken and sent home. I really don't know if I want to do it anymore. Barnaby, you're, you're going to break. I'm really, really close to breaking, yeah. As the chief loses patience, it's now or never for Barnaby. I really don't know. I really don't know. I'll go for you, Coming up, the Unbreakables get a taste of battle. Matt finds it all too much to stomach. <laughs> And Dave and Fraser resume hostilities. I thought it was a bit uncalled for. Adventurer Benedict Allen has led the five Unbreakables to a Zulu tribe. <laughs> where they're experiencing a hair raising initiation ceremony. Dave, Matt, Fraser, and Angus have gone under the barber's blade. But trainee opera singer Barnaby is reluctant to lose his precious locks and is close to breaking. What about all the respect of your, your teammates? There they are going through all this. Huge, huge respect for my teammates. But um, I know my head's going to be the same colour as, as Dave's. Going to be as good as that? Definitely. My, my, head, my scalp has never seen the light of day. The only thing I'm considering about is the next six months and how it's going to hinder my my work. 
On Unbreakables, Barnaby has wrestled an alligator and raced a camel. He's been blown up, gassed, oh my God. bullied, what looks so funny? and buried alive. Is this ex-boy band member about to give up everything for the sake of his hair? When you're back at home with a full head of hair, you'll be thinking, oh, I wish I'd done it. Yeah, totally. Ow. Only hair, but yes. a few more with it. Yeah. Barney, I'll grow back. Mm. You miss this now, over a bit of hair, and you'll regret it the rest of your life, I promise you. Come on, think about it. Did Barnaby, it's fine. Some, it, uh, let's do it. Yeah. Fine. Shash. Ambushash. Pow. You look strange, mate. <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> By submitting to this haircut, Barnaby is no longer the individual he wants to be. He is part of a tribe. But if he thinks that this haircut is the worst thing he'll have to face, then he's in for a big surprise. <laughs> Excitement in the village is at fever pitch. What the Unbreakables don't know is they are being groomed to fight these Zulu warriors in a brutal competition. And to complete their Zulu initiation, the Unbreakables must adopt Zulu skins, sticks, shields and headdresses. All right, listen up, guys. This man is called Samson. He's the fiercest fighter in the whole community. No. The Unbreakables will be entering a traditional stick fighting tournament. If they didn't know what that entails before now, they're about to find out. <laughs> it's a dangerous sport which demands skill, ferocity, and fearlessness. I don't, I don't know what's worse, really, shaving your head or being clubbed around the face by a, a Zulu. These Zulus have been fighting all their lives. The Unbreakables have got just three days to learn the necessary skills. I'm no spring chicken, so we're against a load of... Uh, or we're going to be against a lot of younger guys, the up-and-coming athletes of the Zulu nation. So it's daunting. There we go, she's doing it. Good. You can see the sort of people you're up against, the sort of aggression there the sort of commitment and the sort of courage. And that's what he wants to see from each one of you. With just days before the tournament, there's no time to lose. Samson and his assistant Lippy need to turn these raw recruits into prize fighters. <laughs> <laughs> Only two parts of the body you may not go for, the eyes and the groin. Stick fighting began as training for warfare. Today, it is used to settle disputes and to demonstrate a Zulu's power. But the rules have stayed the same. A single hit from one of these weapons could be a knockout blow. For their first lesson, they're using hollow plastic pipes instead of the heavier wooden sticks. Bang it. Okay. Slow. Yeah. Yeah, slow. There's a fine line between attacking and leaving yourself open to attack. Right. Mustn't hit in the same place. <laughs> all <laughs> over, all oh, over, right. inside and outside. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's important to keep your opponent guessing by varying your angles. <laughs> that's it. Samson likes what he sees in Fraser's all action style. But Angus learns the painful lesson that the first rule of defence is to never leave your head exposed. <laughs> it's the second one in the same place. Yeah, this side, this side. Even for someone with Matt's physical power, stick fighting should be about controlled aggression. Dave ought to be a natural. As a professional boxer, he had a career full of promise. Although I, I used to train like a champion when I was in the gym, I got a li the, the, the lifestyle of a rock and roll star out of the gym, which, and obviously the two don't mix. 
Um, and I let myself down, and I've got to be honest with you, I'll probably let other people down as well. There's something missing in my life, a sense of an achievement, which maybe I should have uh, fulfilled earlier in my life, especially in my, my, my boxing career. I really want to prove that I'm a winner to the, I guess, to the people that um, used to doubt me, used to knock me when I was boxing. But if I can prove to them that I am a winner, that'll give me a huge sense of satisfaction. This ex-boxer has got plenty to prove, but so far, Dave struggled to bring back the glory days. What are you doing this to me for? With the Navy SEALs, he was beaten by Matt's wrestling power. Stick fighting offers Dave a shot at redemption. Even if that means inflicting pain on his fellow unbreakable Barnaby. So what do you think that would feel like if it was a piece of wood? Um, be potentially all over, really. And that's just a blow to the leg. The scary thing is that it's a blow to the head. Then it's not just hospital, that's... I'm not so happy about it, really. Samson's going to award the best fighter for today with the red armband, the yellow one for the person who's worst at the moment. Samson ranks Dave as the top stick fighter and Angus as the worst. It's a disappointment for Angus, but for Dave, it's an encouraging sign. You want to go out on a high, you want to go out fighting, you want to go out giving it everything you've got. And I never really did that. I never really made the best of what I could have done or did the best that I could have, do, could have done. And I regret that. And uh, I never thought I'd have the chance to put the record straight. <laughs> The Unbreakables gather themselves for the second day of their Zulu challenge. Their next task will pitch them against an army of thousands. They are led into the forest where they must confront their fear of the unknown. Deep in the heart of this tree is a hive of wild African honeybees. One by one, they're going to come forward and each person is going to take two handfuls of honey out. Robbing a beehive of honey is a rite of passage for a young Zulu warrior, requiring courage and self-control. If the bees pick on you and you find two or three hundred after you, you have got to run. African honeybees are known as killer bees for a reason. Multiple stings can cause anaphylactic shock and, in extreme cases, death. First, the unbreakables must make the bees drowsy with smoke, but this is a delicate operation. Too many flames, not enough smoke. Smoke is what you want. You're just making the bees angry at the moment. You can see them investigating, getting worked up. Yeah, going down. So the plan is they're, they're opening up as much of the tree as they can. They're risking making the bees angry. Hello, honey. Got to stay calm now, guys. This is, this is the money shot, you know. <laughs> Having come close to breaking over his haircut, Barnaby is keen to restore some pride, so he decides to go first. The bees might be drowsy, but Barnaby needs to stay calm to avoid angering the swarm. It's a disappointing return for his efforts, and he hasn't come through unscathed. Like a throbbing, throbbing pain. Next up is hard man Dave. Yeah, well, I was slightly nervous. I know I'm going to get stung, so. Can you get your hand in there? Yeah. After a couple of stings, he's forced to retreat. Okay, steady, steady. There's honey there, so. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't count, but you're in the right place. To pass this challenge, Dave has to return and grab two handfuls of honey. Well, I'm going in now. That's it, he's got, he's got a handful. Yeah. OK. He succeeds, but he's been stung badly. So those stings were just there, there and then? I've got about five or six, yeah. yeah OK. What, can you tell me exactly what Medic Dr Fee Ramsden needs to monitor Dave for signs of extreme reaction. Like bits moving. What's it feel like? Meanwhile, Angus keeps his nerve. Shocker, see, well done. The noise is quite scary, really, just a constant buzzing. 
I can actually feel like vibrating. And Matt gets the most honey so far. Well, OK, hold it over the smoke to calm those bees down. But the bees are far from calm. Aggravated by their rapidly disappearing honey, they swarm at the top of the tree. Bees are getting really pissed. They're everywhere now. But thousands of killer bees won't phase a man like Fraser. This 44-year-old Iron Man joined the Unbreakables to teach the young guns a lesson. You could say I'm an underdog because of uh, age. Uh, however, you can also use the flip side of that, and there's a degree of maturity and hopefully wisdom that will be apparent over the next two to three months. But it hasn't worked out like that. Fraser's impulsive nature has landed him in trouble. Launching into a swamp... It is just ridiculous to jump in like that. ...using excessive force... Oh, what are you doing? He's face, he's face. That's ..and almost losing his fingers to an alligator. No, 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 keep fingers back, fingers back. Just if you like, down there. Please uh, hold them over the smoke. Fraser gets his two handfuls of honey, but the sweet taste is about to turn sour. Well, you got the honey there, mate. Mm. How's that compared to a European bee sting? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot sharper. Can you just get the one out the roof of my mouth, please? Right, the sting? Yeah, I've just put it in my mouth and the honey. By licking his fingers, he gets stung on the roof of his mouth. Any sting in the mouth is potentially life-threatening. You're not going to see it. Once again, Fraser's fallen victim to his gung-ho approach. Just... Okay, scrape it up, Thanks. Thanks. I was, uh, I was enjoying the honey. I was actually licking it off my fingers and uh, I took a couple of stings to the, the fingers itself and then I got stung in the roof of my mouth. You don't feel like your tongue's swelling? No. no. Okay. It's... Fraser gets away with his latest oh. mistake and between them, the Unbreakables prove their courage to the Zulus. Masla? Masla? Yeah, Masli. So, Masli, this means it's enough, it's good. Well done, lads. Thanks, 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 With the stick fighting tournament just two days away, the Unbreakables learn the techniques of blocking and counter attacking. For now, they're using padded sticks because this is supposed to be about gentle sparring. That's hard, that's hard. But for old foes, Fraser and Dave, there's no holding back, even in practice. There's bad blood between these all-out competitors. In the Everglades, their rivalry threatened to turn nasty. Um, yeah, I think there was a couple of uh, off-the-ball incidents. I thought it was sneaky. He did the me off the ball, and so I hit him back and he cried about it. And now there's a score to settle. Oh, 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 oh you sweat. Oh. All right. I thought it was a bit uncalled for. I mean, obviously, it's, it's one of them where you just you leave your head exposed. I think in a real competition, I had a cream crack at him. We're doing a contact sport. We're throwing shots to the head, and to the body, and to the legs. And of course, if you don't block them, you're going to get hit. The whole point of bat sparring is to learn by your mistakes. So, no, I don't feel bad. It's one of them. The training continues until dark before the Unbreakables bed down for a night under the stars. <laughs> but Dave won't be getting any sleep. He's got a painful abscess on the base of his spine, an injury he's been carrying for weeks. So I can't sit on it or lie on it. Or... You, can't, you can't lie on your back? No. If the abscess requires a hospital visit, Dave could be ruled out of the stick-fighting tournament. If so, he will be broken. Coming up... Oh, Matt gets it off his chest. Fraser reaches breaking point. Foxy. And the Zulus wage war. Now, we knew this was going to happen. There's going to be injuries, there's going to be blood. Explorer Benedict Allen has brought the five remaining Unbreakables to a Zulu tribe in South Africa. They're being prepared for their most terrifying challenge yet. They will take on the Zulus at their own game, a brutal stick-fighting tournament. I don't know what's worse, really, shaving your head or 
being clubbed around the face by a, a Zudu. <laughs> It's dawn, and with the tournament just a day away, there's no let up for the Unbreakables. I don't want to get up now. Benedict has decided they all need a trip to the doctor, but the medicine they're about to get isn't the kind you get prescribed on the NHS. This gentleman is the Sangoma, you could say a medicine man or witch doctor. The Sangoma has prepared a special concoction for you, Ubulao. It'll purify you. It'll be part of your preparation to help you to be fighters. Yeah, I'm going to... What? Yeah. What? Catalan. Take it in pour it there. Take it in drink. What is it? Barnaby, first you've got to suck the foam off. Yeah. And then just drink and drink. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Buttons up. Let's starve it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. This is terrible. Ubulau is a sacred Zulu medicine made from plants and tree bark. It causes the drinker to vomit, which in turn purifies and cleanses them of evil spirits. We've got to finish our World Cup. This is all. Yes. They must get all of it out of their system or the Unbreakables risk being poisoned by the noxious drink. Barnaby, for you to be fully cleansed, it all has to come out. Trust me, I'm trying. Next up is Angus, keen to make up for his poor stick-fighting performance. Good. But Dave <coughs> leaves the Sangoma underwhelmed. <laughs> Rugby playing Matt has got years of post-match socialising under his belt. He shows the Unbreakables how it should be done. Perfect. Perfect, he says. You're like a Zulu, a real Zulu. Good. <coughs> yeah, you're a good man, strong man. The Sangoma singles out Matt as the best performer. Never one to be outdone, Fraser strains every sinew to match Matt's efforts. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, the Sangoma was happy with the way I attacked the um, the drink. Um, and I think I do that with most challenges. Yeah. I've purged my body, um, so it's cleansed, uh, in preparation for a good fight tomorrow, and that's what I want to deliver. The Sangoma says you've done very well. Uh, bad news, because you didn't drink like a Zulu man, you must go over there and wash with that Zulu woman. <laughs> go where you belong, Barnaby. I couldn't give a toss the fact that I had to go and wash up because um, I couldn't be sick as well as everybody else. I mean, got a horrible feeling in the bottom of my stomach from a minging drink and the prospect that my head's about to get caved in. Back at camp, Dr Fee is concerned about Dave's abscess. You've got a large lump that I can feel. It's about the size of a golf ball. Nice. And that is full of pus. I think if I try and squeeze that or put a needle in it here, it might not be the best thing for it. And what it, what it may well need is a surgeon to take a look at it and do it properly for us. The whole objective of me doing this in the first place was to prove to myself and to other people that I'd still got the fire in the belly. 
and to not complete the journey would, would destroy me. But Dave is patched up and presses on. Just in time to join the Unbreakables on a punishing five mile slog to the start of their next challenge. As the Unbreakables fall into line, it's Dave who limps home in last place. It doesn't bode well for the gruelling task ahead. Each one of these ladies carries 40 kilos of water on their head up to the village four kilometres away every day. Each one of you is going to carry one pot on your head, that's 20 litres, and the first person to the village with the largest amount of water wins. You all ready? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go! This is a test of the Unbreakable's balance as well as their endurance. Oh my goodness. Not a lot of head protection. <laughs> Fraser and Barnaby make the early running, followed by Matt. But the women are hot on their heels. Wow, it's just compressing on my neck. Angus is already sacrificing water just so he can make it to the finish. That's crazy. Barnaby's trying the same technique, but he's broken his pot. Oh, fuck. Do I get another pot now, or what do I? No, not now. He's out of contention for the race, leaving the women to start picking off the rest of the unbreakables. For the women, this is an everyday chore. Balancing the heavy pots comes easily, and they're putting the unbreakables to shame. One false move, and Dave's out of the running. Only Matt is anywhere near keeping pace with the women. Rugby playing Matt has been a dark horse from the outset. His quick escape from an Arctic ice hole saw him emerge as a serious contender. The best so far. Victory in the Sahara made him a front runner. Yes! He's getting stronger as the competition goes on. But strength isn't enough. He'll also need agility to get over the next challenge. Even the local women struggle over the styles. So it's an even bigger challenge for 16 stone Matt. How the fuck do they do this? Next, it's Fraser's turn. And true to form, he's determined to do it his way. Meanwhile, the women are on the home straight. Your first mate. Uh, I'm not. I cracked my pot right at the beginning, putting it down, trying to put some more water out of it. Matt is the first of the Unbreakables to make it back to the village with water in his pot. But it's a different story for Iron Man Fraser. He's on his last legs as he enters the final stretch. It's only his never say die attitude that gets him home. Straight through to the post, to the post, to the end, finishing post here. By the chief. <laughs> Those girls are amazing, aren't they? Oh my God. Hey. Have you seen how much you brought back? Lots and lots. Full pots. Full pots. That's amazing. Angus is back in last place. Demoralised, exhausted, and sick as a dog. He finally limps home half an hour after Matt. The Unbreakables have been soundly beaten. 
but it's up to the chief to decide who has performed best. Congratulations. Amongst the Unbreakables, you are the undoubted winner. Matt was the fastest and brought back the most water. Unfortunately, these are the undoubted winners because every single one of the women's pots is almost absolutely full. Congratulate them. The day's events have claimed a significant casualty. Barnaby returns with sickness and a raging fever. Stick out your tongue for me. The really important thing for you tonight, Barnaby, or for us tonight, is to make sure that you're adequately hydrated, that you've got enough fluid inside your body because you're losing it through sweating because you're boiling hot and you're losing it in your diarrhoea and your vomiting. With Barnaby out for the count, his old friend the Sangoma arrives to save the day. Barnaby is delighted to see him. First comes the consultation, then the prognosis. Followed by the prayer. But there's no time for the prayer to take effect. Medic Fiona is so concerned by Barnaby's condition that she decides to put him on a drip. He has just 12 hours to recover before the tournament is due to start. The rest of the Unbreakables have one final training session. Matt, Fraser and Dave have all taken on board the training and developed their own styles of fighting. But Angus is still struggling with the basics. Dave's abscess will be treated tonight, but will he be fit by morning? I'm hoping that the surgeon's going to pass me fit to at least fight tomorrow and I'll be devastated, utterly devastated if this prevents me from taking part in the competition because that's not the way to go out. That's not the way of a fighter to go out. It's the day of the tournament. In three hours' time, these men will be thrown into an arena of Zulu warriors. They'll have to be pumped up, focused and full of aggression. Morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. More importantly, how are you? I do feel considerably better than I did last night. And, um, yeah, I think that I could definitely do a couple of rounds. I don't want you going in there with, without all your wits about you. Yeah. yeah. Because you're going to be putting yourself at risk if you do that. Mm -hmm. With Barnaby recovering, Dave returns, with just hours to spare before the tournament. His abscess has been drained and he's been passed fit to fight. We're not exactly going into this fight fresh, are we? Three days ago, these men arrived in Zululand as outsiders. They are about to prove themselves as Zulu warriors. You know, I'm worried about what's going to happen, you know. Um, I just want to get to the fight, give it a good shot, and uh, get this thing over with. I'm feeling incredibly nervous. Um, I'm hoping as soon as we sort of rock up and, and see all the other all the other fighters and all the other people there, then the adrenaline will start going, heart start pumping, and I'll um, I'll be up for it. I'm looking forward to this and, and really showing what I can do and showing the world uh, that I've still got it, that I've still got what it takes, that raw aggression, that power, that will to win. The Unbreakables are travelling to a neighbouring village where the tournament is being hosted. Awaiting them are some of the region's fiercest stick fighters. They show the Unbreakables what they're up against. We knew this was going to happen, we knew we were going to get 
There's going to be injuries, there's going to be blood, there's going to be stitches, there's going to be broken legs, which should look like that has been. Coming up, Matt starts his own Zulu fan club. Fraser takes it to the edge. Got to try and keep it in the rules, Fraser. And Dave declares war on the Zulu nation. Explorer Benedict Allen has brought the remaining five unbreakables to South Africa. They've endured illness and adversity. During a punishing training regime, which has delivered them to a Zulu stick fighting tournament. You've seen how serious this can be. Show these Zulus, even if you're not equal to their skills, you are every bit equal in terms of courage. The Unbreakables have drawn a big crowd of curious onlookers. <laughs> Just four hours ago, Barnaby was on an intravenous drip. Now he summons up his last reserves. He seems to be getting on top. But after a clean blow to the head, the chief steps in. Barnaby is beaten. Next up is Angus. That's it. That's it. Lacking confidence, he's immediately on the back foot and allows his opponent to dominate him. Outfought and outclassed, Angus is beaten into submission. Two unbreakables are out of the tournament. It's down to Fraser to restore some pride. Fraser's fighting technique has all the sophistication of a barroom brawl. They can't do judo, can't do judo. His style isn't pretty, but it's effective. They've never seen fighting like this in these parts. You've got to try and keep within the rules, Fraser. <laughs> Through a combination of bullying and naked aggression, Fraser wins the day when his opponent gives up the fight. Matt's got the physique to intimidate any opponent. This heavyweight contender towers over his challenger. Well done, we're blocked. Well done, man. But it's tit for tat. <laughs> Matt lands a painful blow which ends the fight. <laughs> to the delight of Matt's Zulu fan club. <laughs> Ex-boxer Dave has 70 professional fights under his belt. Now he's back where he belongs. But he's up against one of the top stick fighters in the region. They're matching each other blow for blow. Dave's relentless attacks are giving him the upper hand. Just as he's overwhelming his opponent, the fight is stopped. Dave has taken a blow to the head. Oh, that was a sensational flick. Like, Dave's a warrior. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it says, by the rules, if you're showing blood, you can't continue. 
It's a cruel blow for Dave, who has been robbed of victory. Oh, it's a win, man. It's my comeback. It's my arena. Yeah. And it stopped on cuts. Wow. I, mean, I really wanted to win that. But that's just the way of it, I guess. You're going into somebody else's backyard, not somebody else's, the Zulu's backyard, playing their games with their rules. So it's an intimidating place to be, and everybody rose to the challenge. Well, I thought they did anyway. With Dave out of contention, only Matt and Fraser remain in the tournament. They must now fight each other, and the victor will be crowned best fighter by the Zulus. They each perform a traditional Zulu dance as they prepare to meet in the final. Fraser's playing a patient game to cope with Matt's extra power. He's waiting for an opening. And with one blow, it's all over. It's a big blow, got a bit of respect for him. But I could see his blows coming, so I was just waiting for his headshot. And then I got one, a good one on him. I'm really frustrated. I mean, he got me with a good shot, but I just feel I was 50% and um, could have destroyed him, maybe. But today, Fraser is the Zulu warrior. <laughs> Next time on Unbreakables. <laughs> For their final and most terrifying challenge, the Unbreakables face capture and interrogation by South Africa's elite combat force. Just enter through the gates of hell. Pushed to their physical and mental limits. I'm not gonna break. They must take everything that is thrown at them or be broken and fall at the final hurdle. All right, you're broken, I'm carrying this. No, sir! I'm taking this. No, sir! No, sir!